This video is a brief summary of the preparation that you need to be doing at the very last minute before you go into your GCSE biology exam and in the first five minutes of that exam. Hopefully you're now feeling confident that you've managed to complete all of your revision up to this point and you've had the time to watch the full paper summary of everything that could come up in this exam. You'll have noticed that on the exam paper it specifies that you need to bring a black pen, a ruler and a calculator. The black pen is really important because your exam papers are going to be scanned and sent to your examiners electronically. They're not going to receive the copy in the post and black pen just scans better than any other colour. The ruler is important because as part of paper two, you might be asked about the required practical where you're sampling things. And for that, you may be asked to measure things on your exam paper. So you do need a ruler rather than just something with a straight edge. The calculator, again, is going to be important. A lot of students forget that they're going to need one for their biology exam, but actually 10% of the marks on this paper are for math skills. And that includes things like squaring and doing square roots, which are going to be quite challenging to do if you don't have a good calculator. If you've managed to make it to school without any of these things, go find your science teacher or go find your maths teacher or someone who can lend things to you. Don't wait until you're in the exam because often the invigilators only have a limited supply of stationery that they can lend out. Now, when you get into that exam, for the GCSE science papers, you're given one minute per mark plus an extra five minutes. And that means you've got a little bit of time to have a look through the paper, see what there is, and also write down some key facts that you have kept in your head as you're walking in. So basically, you want to have a little list of things that you've decided in advance that are particularly likely to come up or that you know that you struggle with and you know that you often forget. So you have those five facts that you've decided in advance. And when you walk in, as soon as you're allowed to start writing, before you look at the rest of the paper, you can write those down. So before the exam, you want to try and think of five key facts that are likely to come up or be useful that you're going to keep in your head. And you're just going to keep saying to yourself over and over as you go into the exam. And this is good for two reasons. One, because it does help you to remember something that maybe you're struggling to keep in your brain, but also because it kind of gives you something to concentrate on and keep yourself calm at the start of the exam. Now, in biology, unlike the chemistry and the physics, you're not going to have a separate periodic table or equation sheet to write on, but there's very likely to be some white space in your exam paper that you can use. You'll often find there's a whole page that's inserted so that you can have both pages of a question next to each other rather than having to flip over, and it will say, don't write here. But that instruction is just so that you don't think that you can use that space for answering questions and still have it marked. They're not trying to tell you that you can't use it for rough working. So find one of those pages or find a bit of white space that's not actually used for a question. And at the start of that exam, when you are able to write things, you're going to write down whatever five key facts you've thought of are. Now, I often suggest that people use working scientifically facts because often we're so focused on revising the content and the biology that people forget that actually quite a lot of the marks are for general scientific skills like identifying variables. Now, I'm going to give you more ideas here than you could possibly write down. The idea is that you pick the five key things that you think are going to be most useful to you. But here are some ideas for things that you might want to consider. As I said, remembering the variables is really, really key, particularly for the required practicals. Now, I magpied this from someone on Twitter years ago, and I can't remember who, but I really like mixed dry. So this stands for you modify the independent variable and that goes on the X axis. And then the dependent variable is the thing that you record. So you modify your independent variable and then you look at your dependent variable and see what's happening to it. And that will go on the Y axis of a graph. Then I say to my classes, I am a control freak. I never like anything to change. I like to keep everything the same. So your control variables are the things that you are going to force to stay constant. Remember, you have to be actively controlling it. So just doing something at room temperature does not count as a control variable. But if you use a water bath, that does count. I'd also suggest having some conversions, like saying there are a thousand milligrams in a gram or a thousand micrograms in a milligram, and maybe also repeatable and reproducible. So repeatable is when you keep using the same method and you get the same pattern, even if the results aren't exactly the same. Whereas reproducible could be another group of scientists or it could be a slightly varied method. But again, we still see that same pattern. Now, in terms of the subject content, there are only three topics in biology paper two. So we've got homeostasis and I would probably be starting with that required practical, because, as you know, the required practicals are very likely to come up. They make up 15 percent of the marks. So for this one, this is the ruler drop test. Um, I write down that you don't count down when you do it because that's a mistake we see a lot of the time. We're trying to see um, how quickly can someone respond to the ruler being dropped. So you don't want to tell them when it's going to happen. 
we also want to measure um, once the ruler has dropped, how far did it fall? A lot of people talk about catching it, but then don't actually say that you're going to look and see what the number is and write that down. And also just a reminder to yourself that this is not a reflex because it involves conscious thought. Now, speaking of reflexes, you might want to write down the reflex arc. So going from a receptor to a sensory neuron to a relay neuron to the motor neuron to the effector. So that could be a muscle or a gland. And also another thing that people tend to forget is that insulin is going to lower your blood glucose and glucagon is going to raise it. You'll notice that I've also underlined the ON of glucagon. And this is because, as you know, usually in science, we don't worry a lot about the spelling, but there are a few pairs of words that can be easily confused. And so they must be spelled accurately. And glucagon is one of those. You can't spell it with an EN at the end because then your examiner might not be sure whether you're trying to write glycogen and then you don't get any marks. In variation and evolution, we've got another word that has to be spelled correctly. That one's meiosis to contrast it with mitosis. And you might want to remind yourself that this one involves two divisions and it makes four cells, which are gametes, sex cells. You might want to remind yourself that DNA is the molecule that makes up genes and lots of genes fit together to make a chromosome. And humans have 23 pairs in their somatic cells, their body cells, not the gametes. We often find that with genetics, it's the um, definitions that people fall down on. So when you're talking about something being dominant, we definitely don't want to say anything about it being a strong allele or just an allele that is, shows up more often. We want that idea that it is expressed in the heterozygote or it's expressed when there's only one copy present, whereas a, a recessive allele is not expressed in the heterozygote. It's only expressed in the homozygote. Likewise, when you talk about an allele, you definitely don't want to be saying anything about a flavour of a gene. We want that idea that it's a variant of a gene and that different alleles arise as a result of mutation. If you're talking about selective breeding, you need to discuss that you're going to continue for many generations until all of the offspring show the desired trait. And for evolution by natural selection, you might want to write down the different stages. So we start off with variation caused by mutation. Then there's a selection pressure. That causes some individuals to survive and because they survive, they're able to reproduce more and therefore the number of individuals with that particular trait increase in the population. For ecology, you might want to remind yourself that biotic is living, whereas abiotic is not living. And the biotic factors that can affect where an organism is found include its food, predators, pathogens and competition. You might want to remind yourself that interspecific is between different species, whereas intraspecific is competition within a species. And then again, we've got a required practical. And the key thing that people tend to get wrong with this one is that when they're talking about placing quadrats, they'll often talk about just throwing it over their shoulder. And although that might feel random, it won't actually give you random placement. So you want to talk about drawing a grid and using a random number generator to determine where those quadrats get placed. Once you've decided what your five things are going to be, make yourself a little list and practice remembering them. So I've just picked out a random five here and you would only be writing down those things at the start of the exam. You don't want to waste your time trying to reproduce all of these things. I've just given you quite a few suggestions. Once you've spent just a couple of minutes writing down those five key facts that you've kept in your head going into the exam, you need to look through the paper and see which topics have come up. And crucially, which topic is it for the extended response six mark question? It may be, particularly if you're taking higher, that you might get more than one extended response question, but there will definitely be one that is common to the higher and the foundation tiers. So if you're taking foundation, it's going to be at the back of the paper in the last two or three questions. And if you're taking higher, it's going to be at the start. And this is designed to be at a grade four to five level. Now, the reason you want to find this early on is that it means that while you're answering the rest of the paper, you can kind of have it ticking away in the back of your head and you can keep coming back and just scribbling down any little ideas that you've had. Remember, your examiner can give you marks even if you've just made a little plan and not actually written it out in full. And also don't forget that you have to organise your ideas in a logical order, which a plan will help with, but you don't need to write in full sentences. Your examiners love bullet points. So just as you're going through the rest of the paper, having read this, you might think something like, oh, I know that for this question, I'm going to need to use a quadrat and I'm going to need to write something about transects. And then that's all I can think of. So I go back to answering the rest of the paper. But in a few minutes time, I might think of something else and I can just jot that down in the white space. And then by the time I actually come to answer the question, I've had chance to come up with a sensible, logical order. 
One other thing is that you'll notice that it does say that you can't write outside of the box. Now, what that means is that your exam paper is going to be scanned. And so if you've gone off the edges, there's a chance it will get missed out. So if you do run out of space, you can ask for more paper and the invigilators will be able to bring you some more so that you can carry on and your examiners can definitely see everything that you've written. One thing you should never do is just start writing in a different part of the exam paper. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you're now feeling slightly more prepared for your GCSE Biology Paper 2. If you did find this useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE Biology videos coming soon.